let's just see here. Look, that just came right out. Wow, I really don't love that. Oh, man. Welcome back to the Boat Shed. My name is John. Today, surgery continues at the bow of the boat as we prepare to put new core material in there. I'm also going to try and find out what the heck is going on with those bulwarks that we just saw. And I'm expecting a visit from one of my personal favorite sailing channels, so you're going to want to stick around for all that. Well, I managed to lose the audio to this first clip, so I hope that you enjoy badly dubbed kung fu movies. With all the old core material out, we're ready to start planning and preparing to put new materials in. The original boats had the stem head fitting mounted above the bulwarks. It looks like the later models have the bulwarks cut away and the fitting lowered to deck level. It's no doubt a more solid mounting location, but I suspect that the mold wasn't changed much. There's some pretty serious cracking on the sides of the bulwarks here. I'm gonna need to take a look at that. Let's see what I have planned for the new core material in this area, and then we'll start preparing for the new installation. So while we're talking about the core material here for the very bow section underneath the stem head fitting, we used to have all these little blocks of plywood, and then we had that big mat of three quarter inch built up chop strand mat. And what I've got is right here. And we're gonna give this a shot. And let's take a look here. I'm not sure where my knife is. Quar one and a quarter inch thick G10 block. And this is gonna roughly go up here. So I have an inch and a half thickness total, and this is one and a quarter. And so then the rest of it will be built up with layers of 1708 and epoxy to get it nice and flat to this surface. So we should be able to get a really good platform here for the stem head fitting to go back onto. It's gonna be even better than when it was new. So this would be the area where we're gonna be maybe cutting in a little bit, but we don't wanna do a lot of damage in here. I wanna be able to fix it pretty easily. All right, what I've decided to do here is actually drill some holes up around the perimeter of where the glass is laid up inside here. That way, I'm, when I'm cutting from on top or removing layers, I'm not gonna be risking cutting into the hull laminate. We'll drill some holes to make sure we know where we're going. I'm gonna run the vacuum to keep it clean. That's where I'm happy to have my little Christmas light switch here. And if I look comfortable, it's because I really am. This has actually worked out pretty well. So I see my furthermost port side hole came out here, and then I have one that was behind it that actually came out on more of an angle just behind it over here. And then my forwardmost starboard hole that I drilled is here. And then I think the other one is like actually, because they're all on the other side, the outside of the mounting holes, I think it would, it would be through here somewhere. It hasn't even come up yet. So I think I'm pretty safe to work this area down. And then in here, I'm gonna be, yeah, kind of cutting right along here. So it's sort of where I've already removed a lot of material, so I think I'm going to be in pretty good shape. Cool. We're going to start sculpting some of this back to try to get a nice angle on here. We're going to cut back into the, the hull uh, laminate a little bit, put a nice angle on that as much as we can so we get a nice long surface area for the new glass to bond onto and area for that G10 that I showed you to get in here. So we're going to start cleaning this up a little bit. We're going to be using this Makita tool. You've probably seen this before on lots of different boat channels. This one's brand new. This one's going to get uh, it's an inaugural voyage today, so let's get it a try.
Okay, so there's a few things I want to do up here at the bow as I'm preparing to get that G10 ready to go in here. You can possibly see that these four holes, there have obviously been two mounting positions and we're gonna probably just pick one. <laughs> we're gonna fill the holes in. I'll put it in, make sure it's just the way I want it and then we'll put brand new holes through the G10, through the new glass on top and back through this bottom layer. So today I'm just gonna grind out these openings a little bit, produce a nice gentle bevel on them so that I can just sort of get a epoxy plug in here. I'm not gonna lay new glass in here because I'm gonna have an inch and a quarter, almost a full inch and a half of solid glass on top of it. And then when I put the new bolts through, we'll have new backing plates, not gonna be a problem. Sanders left a nice gentle bevel on all these holes. Just gives it some meat, some area to, for the epoxy plug to bond onto. And just to clean up all the way to the bottom of the skin, I'm gonna use this little Dremel bit. This is the 115 burr bit. And I really like this for doing these small jobs. It's also great if you're trying to take old deck penetrations that were not properly plugged and you can drill, put this inside and just sort of route out inside to make a little sort of a counter bore without disturbing your top skin and you can pour epoxy into that and then re-drill it and creates a pretty good bond. Let's get going on this. I'm just gonna lay a little bit of tape on the underside of those holes and prevent the epoxy from running through in. But that epoxy is pretty tenacious stuff. And my experience has been that sometimes it can go everywhere and sometimes it can sneak past the tape and then create a leak, which is kind of annoying. There's not a lot of risk in here as far as damaging anything, it's just gonna get you know, little drips down the side, which I can either live with or sand out if I really care. I, mean, I am gonna probably sand all this because I wanna redo the paint in here because it looks awful. While I'm doing all this work, I might as well. What happens if, if you don't seal the hole completely, if there's like a little gap, the resin gets down and it starts just like pushing the, the tape around. So we'll see how we did. All right, with these holes now, prepped, ready to go. I'm gonna blow this out once with the air compressor, wipe it with acetone, we'll mix up some epoxy, we'll start with thin, paint a little bit on, mix it up thick, and then spread that over here. The reason I like to put the thin, thin epoxy on first here is that it can soak in a bit. It's got the viscosity to get into these little cracks. Okay, so let's mix up a bit more thickened up.
Okay, so we're gonna let this first layer get tacky, and then I might be able to come back with some fresh stuff once this sets up, when it's still, uh, like I can get a good chemical bond. You know, if you let that sit too long, then you gotta sand it. It's been about one hour, and this thickened epoxy has started to kick off. It's not fully set, but it's tacky, so that's perfect. So we can come in now, and I'm gonna lay a bit more thickened epoxy in to fill in that gap and this gap. And the reason I didn't fill it all at once is because you get too much of this at one time and you get a huge exotherm, so it just gets too hot. It heats up, it starts off gassing. It could actually be kind of dangerous. Something to be aware of. So I don't want too much to go down here. And especially when I'm laying the G10, I don't want a lot to go down there. So I just want to kind of plug that up with a minimal amount of thickened epoxy here. So it's the next day. This is all totally hardened up. You might be wondering why it's so yellow. The hardener that I'm using is a little older and it, it can tend to kind of turn a little bit amber colored. It doesn't affect the performance, so I'm not worried about it, but that's why it looks a little yellow. I'm just gonna give a quick little light sanding to this to uh, lower the high spots, and then we'll go down below and see how it looks from inside too. Okay, so those look pretty good. Did a pretty decent job of filling those and they're uh, mostly flat. There's a couple of low voids, but let's go see what they look like from down inside. So here they are from the underside. I might need a knife to, there we go. Took some of the paint off, but yeah, we can see where that did pretty good. It's a little tacky. I don't know if that's the adhesive or if it's just uh, not fully cured down here. I think it's probably just the adhesive. Yeah, these look pretty good. So I'll take all the tape off and then if we wanted to lay more glass under here, we would just rough it up and put another layer down here too. In preparation to start putting material back into the core, I want to taper the edge that I've left on the sides of the bulwarks down before we start putting stuff in because it'll be very difficult to do that after I've put in material without damaging it. So we have a 3 16 inch top layer. So at a 12 to one ratio, that means I need a two and one quarter inch setback to get that proper taper. These are gonna be in the way a little bit. So we're gonna get those removed and then we're gonna start smoothing down that glass. I'm very curious to know what's behind there. I've heard it was stainless. Some of these old boats, the older ones, have mild steel. That's no good. Anyway, let's mark this one. One P, one port side. That one was just spinning. I suspect all of these are just spinning. Let's try to tighten one and see. Yeah, that one might be working. It's very hard to see what's in there. At this point, I do not know. Let's mark this and we'll start tapering these back. I have another new tool. So this is the Bosch GET 75-6. So this is the six inch random orbital. This has the turbo mode where it's more of a direct drive for fast material removal and it has this nice vacuum port. So I bought this because I have a lot of sanding to do and when it comes to material removal, a regular orbital sander doesn't work that fast. Belt sanders make a lot of mess. I'm hoping that this will remove a lot of material and be able to control the dust. Again, I'm just really trying to control dust in here as much as possible. It looks really nice and clean right now when this series is over. Let's see how it looks. Let's see if it lasts that long. the 3M sanding pad. You can see that the edges are kind of already worn out a bit. This is probably a great disc for working on a nice big flat surface that you're trying to polish out and probably not so good for attacking on an angle like this and, and with the material kind of running over the edge. So you're kind of always scraping the side off. So let's take this off. Let's try one of these more traditional pads. This is a 60 grit. 
We'll see how that does. So we're gonna try that one now. Let's give it a shot, see how it goes. Okay, so now that we've got a nice taper on these two edges where it's almost full thickness up here at the bulwark and tapers down to pretty thin. It's, it might not be exactly flat, but it's pretty good. Now I want to rough up the base here uh, so we can get ready to trowel on some epoxy and put in some core once I decide what I'm putting in here, which I still haven't figured out yet. Here we go. There you go. Uh, we've got it pretty flat, feeling pretty good. I need to kind of sand on the underside of this a little bit. I'll probably just have to do that by hand. And then uh, we're ready to start putting some core back in here. Feels good. This is where the stem head fitting goes. And this cutaway has a lot of cracks in it that you can probably see here. And I'm not really sure what's going on behind there. We're gonna have to dig this out to investigate that. We get a lot of seasons. We're not in the Caribbean all the time where it's hot and we have freezing cycles. So if there's water getting in here, when water freezes, it expands. There could be water getting in here and then as it, as it goes through the freeze-thaw cycles, it could be expanding and contracting and that could be what's causing these cracks. Even if I'm pretty sure I'm not getting water down into the boat through this bulwark, I really wanna get it as watertight as possible because of that issue, because I do plan to have this boat back in the Northwest. We need to fix this, see what we can do. So you wanna watch out for water and stuff if it freezes. Let's just see here. Like that just came right out. Oh yeah. Sure enough, there's wood back there. Oh man. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. We got wood. How far does that go? Wow, I really don't love that. Hmm. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. See, that's cracked pretty thick glass too. I don't, it must not have been, this must not have been laid up with proper fiberglass. This must just have been resin. Yeah, see, that's just resin. There's a big chunk of it there. We found some compromised plywood here inside the bulwark and that's a disappointing and surprising discovery. I'm not quite sure what purpose it serves in there, so I'm gonna to try to figure that out as well as what I should be doing about it and we'll be presenting that in an upcoming video. Now I'm sure there's gonna be lots of opinions out there and if you have one, go ahead and put that in the comment section. Anyway, enough bad news, let's talk about something a little more uplifting. In the short time that I've been making these videos and telling this story, it's the community that's building around this project that's made the biggest impression on me. Many of you have sent comments and emails to offer support, tips, and encouragement. Some of you even came by with boat parts and Norwegian Melka Chocolata. Now, I'm sure my Norwegian is terrible. I'm sorry for that. 
Even something as simple as liking this video to me means a whole lot, so I appreciate it very much. Thank you. That spirit of helpfulness extends into the creator community as well, and this week I was so encouraged to meet an intrepid sailing couple who are working on their own massive refit project not too far from this big plastic shed. We have some really special visitors today that I wanted to introduce you to that, that happened to stop by. They live in the neighborhood. Guys, come on in, guys. I want to introduce you to the, the gang here. So you all will know my how you know. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for coming today. Absolutely. Absolute it's been, pleasure. It's been it, such a pleasure for me to meet you guys. Just and a little magic carpet right away. Yeah, it's really not too <laughs> bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, so my and Aladino, I, I reached out to them for, uh, for just some tips and help, and you guys were just so gracious. You said, let's do better than that. Let's come and say hi and visit. So Let's make you friends. Yeah. There's not yeah. that many I people doing stuff like this. Yeah, so. we're all a bit crazy. So yes. anyway, uh, I know that the people that watch my work will love your work too, and they'll be excited to see that we've connected. So thank you so much for coming. And, and, of uh, course, our pleasure. Thank you for having it's us. It's been great. It's been and awesome. we've also filmed a video, but we're very slow at putting videos out, <laughs> so it will appear eventually. Right on. It will. Yeah. All right. Awesome well, project. You guys yeah. hungry? Let's get some food. Yeah. All, all right. right. Let's do it. Awesome. <laughs> Walk in the frame. Well, I wish we would have rolled so much more footage while Maya and Aladino were here. It was just such a great time. We were having so much fun that we forgot to do any work. But um, Maya and Aladino, thank you again for coming. It was a pleasure to meet you. You're welcome back anytime. Please bring your black ladder pants next time and we'll get to do some real fun work. But uh, if you've enjoyed today's video, I'd love it if you'd leave a like. It really does help this video get up to see more people. If you're new to the project and would like to get caught up, your playlist is right here. And if you'd like to subscribe for more of this content and hopefully next time the microphones work the whole time, that's your button right there. Again, I'm so thankful you came by the shed today. We'll see you in the next one. We're ready to start putting some glass in. Sorry, let me correct that. It's gonna be a very exciting clip. Watch me slowly tape these holes up. <laughs>